Okay, so let's let's take a, a mental inventory of everything that we've done to this point. So essentially, we started with a set of preferences, right? Every consumer has their preferences. I prefer coffee to tea. I prefer uh, Dells to Apple. I prefer bananas to apples. I don't know why I did apple twice, one the computer, one the fruit, but whatever. Uh, so everybody has their preferences. And if we were to uh, take these preferences and map them to some sort of um, consumption uh bundle we call it, a consumption bundle being the list of things that we consume, for every uh, preference, for every consumption bundle, we should have a preference um, ranking on it, basically. Okay, So I prefer two apples and one banana to uh, three apples and one orange. We should be able to say something about uh, what you prefer on that. And, you know, maybe maybe in real life our preferences are a little muddied, but for the sake of economics and for the sake of being able to abstract on something and say something meaningful, um, economists will typically kind of uh, take these consumption bundles and they'll map them to a function where every consumption bundle yields uh, some sort of utility level, right? And the, the importance of utility is that it gives us that ranking. It gives us some sort of um, variable or number uh, by which we can rank different consumption bundles and how happy they make us. Okay, um, and economists tend to assume that you know utility is going to be um, relatively uh, stable over time. So you know if one day you prefer three apples to one orange, uh, the next day you're also going to prefer three apples to one orange. And um, you know if you like apples, it's not going to be the case that three apples is going to make you. Uh, you're not going to dislike apples one day and uh, like apples the next day. So they're stable over time. We assume that consumers are basically rational. Um, so if you like apples and I give you three apples, uh, you like four apples at least as much as three apples. Um, uh, we assume that uh, preferences are uh, basically... Uh, so if I prefer three apples to one banana, and I would prefer one banana to an orange, I should prefer three apples to uh, one orange. So we, um, the word is blank, you know, transitive is the word I'm looking for. Uh, we assume that preferences are transitive. Okay, and that's all just background. So don't don't stress on those, those phrases or whatever, but basically the, the takeaway is that we assume that consumers are relatively rational in their preferences. And again, that's just an assumption. Uh, there's actually empirical data in, uh, that shows that it might not always be the case. And if you look at behavioral economics, you'll see plenty of examples where uh, it won't be the case. And the chapter in your textbook uh, does a pretty good job of covering the basics of behavioral economics, which I find very interesting. But um, it's a tangent, and it's not something that most economists will tend to worry about um, unless, they, unless it's something that they should be worrying about. Okay, so once we have a consumption bundle mapped to a utility function, uh, we can then say a bunch of things about uh, the the consumer's preferences as they relate to price. So you have a utility function, and then uh, the other piece that we need is basically the budget. Okay, so we need uh, what their income is, what the prices are for the goods that they're that are in their consumption bundle. And I've been showing you two dimensional graphs, and you know. Uh, uh, maybe an indif indifference curve with two, like a 2D axis where the third contour would be the utility. Um, so I've cut, kept the two consumption bundles of two, two goods, uh, but it doesn't have to be the case in real economics. Consumption bundles can be um, uh, infinite, essentially. Um, that's not really an issue once you learn the math behind it. Um, but, uh, you know, for the purpose of this class, we're sticking to two consum uh, bu consumption bundle of two goods. But so you, you have the, the prices that you need, the, the two prices and your income, and then you can uh, form a budget constraint. So you have your utility function, which has your preferences. Uh, you have your budget constraint, um, which uh, tells you what's feasible or not. And then subject to that budget constraint, you're going to try to pick the, uh, the consumption bundle that will maximize your utility, the, the consumption bundle that gets you uh, happiest, that makes you happiest. OK, um, and then from there, uh, you know, so that's that that's all that stuff about uh, the bang for buck rule. Right. 
uh, equalizing the marginal utilities or the marginal rate of substitution, the ratio of marginal utilities to the um, the price ratio, and then exhausting the budget, right? That'll get you your optimal consumption bundle. But if one of the uh, prices changes, well, that's going to change what the optimal consumption bundle is. And that's how we got through the substitution and income effects, right? A price change led to uh, a change in the optimal budget, uh, optimal consumption bundle, okay? Now, all this, if we were to filter it down into what we need to know right now, is that we were able to get from a set of preferences all the way down to uh, basically the consumer's willingness to pay given a particular price, okay? So what, what their willingness to pay for a particular good is. And that essentially is where the demand curve comes from. So if we go back all the way back to, I think it's like lecture three where we did supply and demand, remember I, I came up with those willingness to pays and um, we we like summed them and we came up with uh, the demand curve and it was, uh, we, uh, we had that homework with, uh, like it was Patty and Donna and, and they preferred a certain number of shots. Well, the willingness to pays basically come from the the preferences, the utility function, and the and the budget constraint. Okay, so it's basically what happens if you shift the price around in the budget constraint. What's the what's the optimal consumption bundle that they get? That's that's how you get to their willingness to pay. Okay, um, so uh, from there you drive the demand curve. So let me. Uh, kind of spell it out with the bullet points now, now that you've kind of gotten the, the, the overall picture of it. Okay, so we started with the utility. Uh, now we're here. Uh, we started with the utility. We use that to determine, determine how preferences, or to, we use that to determine preferences and how those preferences change with price. Okay, from there, we're able to build a demand curve. Okay. So this is why I had pizza and not pizza, okay? I, I did that for a reason. So uh, if you consider everything that's not pizza um, one good and you have everything that's pizza as the other, and that's just for uh, the sake of the having a two-dimensional graph. In, real, in the real world, we'd have, or in real economics, we'd have whatever goods are really relevant or um, maybe uh, cash as, as a substitute good or something like that. Uh, but we can, once we had that, we, we were able to map the price increases to a uh, budget constraint change. And then from there, from the optimal consumption of pizza, right? So everything that wasn't pizza, uh, or sorry, everything that was pizza changed with price, uh, according to some, according to our budget constraint. Okay. So if we go back up. Where's my pizza and not pizza graph? So as we change the budget constraint, the quantity demanded of pizza is going to change here, right? Your, your willingness to pay for pizza is going to change, okay? So, uh, you know, here you might have like five slices of pizza, but if your budget constraint moves down to here, your optimal consumption bundle will be here. So you might have three slices of pizza or something like that, okay? So let's do this for every possible price. Um, so if we were to do this for every possible price, so let's say the price of pizza goes from $1.50 to $2, you might change from three slices to four. Uh, that's, that's backwards. It should be four slices to three because you want to consume, uh, you should want to consume more pizza uh, as the price of pizza goes down. <laughs> So that's, that's backwards, I'll fix that. My bad. All right. Uh, nope. So I just wanted to save, okay. So continuing this exercise for every conceivable price, will get your individual demand curve, right? So that's just one person's preferences. Other people might have different preferences. Okay, so this is the optimal consumption bundle of, uh, when price is equals two, it's three. This is the optimal consumption bundle when price equals four. Okay, or sorry, 150 is four, okay. 
So from there, you can uh, draw a demand curve where three and four are quantities on that demand curve. Okay. So you can like imagine like a uh, essentially an indifference curve in the background here. Um, or maybe 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 not because this is not a good uh, strike. What I just said. Okay. So if there are three people in the market, you just essentially sum up their quantity demanded for a particular price. So two plus four plus one, that's the market demand of seven. Two plus three plus five, the market demands eleven. Okay. So if uh, they're willing to pay uh, two fifty per, uh, sorry. If they're willing to buy two dollar, uh, two pizzas for a price of two fifty, and three pizzas for a price of two, and you add them all up, you're going to get the market demand curve. Okay, and that's that's really all there is to it. It's just adding up their their uh, the amount that they're willing to to pay for, essentially the the their quantity demanded for a particular price. It's 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 really that simple. And just know that in the background, there's all these things going on with consumer theory about. Uh, kind of getting to this budget constraint and indifference curve and and optimizing the consumption model and from there you can you can uh, derive the demand okay I, I might have uh, made it sound a little complicated at first but it's just really not um, it's really just just know that there's a background to uh, building this demand curve that uh you know goes back to uh, the you know finding the optimal budget uh, optimal consumption bundle. Okay.